my dream has always been, since coming out of the womb, is to be rich and successful because it was everything we didn't have. I'm a product of date rape, and my father deserted us. I grew up in a single family home before that was fashionable in America. I had no supervision, no father image. I really was rebellious. By the time I was 15, I was out of the house. I got shipped to Taiwan, ostensibly so I could learn Chinese because I told my mother over and over, I hated Chinese, I hated to be Chinese. I told her I wanted to be white. Uh, in, in Mount Joy, Iowa, there were no other Chinese people. And I wanted to, so, so much I wanted to fit in. And basically I had no identity. So here I am in Taiwan. And now I got worse problems because where I, where I felt so Chinese in Iowa and so foreign and not fitting in, now I'm really not fitting in because I am in China and I am so American. I got uh, snookered into going to a, a Baptist uh, youth camp in, uh, in Taiwan. And I heard about Jesus in a different way. And I just heard the basic message. Jesus loves me and he has a plan for me. And I mean, I'm just a sucker for, for love. You know, I remember standing up and saying, I want to become a Christian. I just, uh, you know, who wouldn't want to be a Christian? basically at that camp. So I just went along with the crowd, as usual. And as soon as I got home to the United States, of course, I forgot everything about it. And then went to UCLA, joined the Jewish fraternity, and I remember that in the middle of the 60s, a guy named Hal Lindsey came to town and he converted three of our fraternity brothers out of a Jewish fraternity. And they all joined in and making fun of them and ridiculing them. And I'm, to my shame, I joined in that. And I, but I knew in my heart that there was something real. And if these guys that we respected, who were Jewish, would accept this Jesus as, uh, this, as their Messiah, you know, I mean, for me to, to ridicule that, to join the crowd and to be basically ashamed and not, not to mention that I actually had an experience with him myself when I was 15. That's a, that was an embarrassment. To make a long story short, I uh, crammed four years in the five, got into trouble with the draft, joined ROTC. Before I knew it, I was in Gießen, Germany on a missile site watching the East German border in case the Russians ever attacked us, pulling 24-hour duty. And uh, of course, that, that kind of got old after a while because Russians never did come. Here I am in Gießen, Germany, no meaning to my life, just a loser, just not functioning in life. All the guys in Germany were back from Vietnam. Here they are talking about killing gooks in Nam. I'm looking in the mirror saying, wait a minute, I think I'm a gook to these guys. It could not fit in. So I got real alienated. I'm stoned all the time. And, I, and now my wife's leaving me. And uh, I was just at the low point in my life. That's when a couple named uh, June and David Otis, uh, they were Department of Defense civilians. And they, uh, they picked us up. And what I mean by picking us up, they just uh, became our friends. We had no friends. Invited us to their home and uh, just shared their lives with us. One night over dinner, my wife says, why are, why are you guys so different from other people? Um, why are we different? Well, we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And they just started talking about it as if it was like a friend or a, a, a college buddy or somebody that was living next door. And, and, uh, and so my wife got so interested. And you know, I started to see her life change. We were no longer fighting. Um, 
she was looking at me differently and it was just inevitable i just capitulated and i think as i think about that time i just remember being in a coffee house downtown geeson and and there were candles on the table and there was just so much love in the room and uh, and i just felt the love of god it was <laughs> it was so strong and uh it just uh it just overwhelmed me I went home, I just uh, went home that night and uh, I said, you know, I'm just really not uh, proud of what I am and I just need help. I mean, uh, I just don't know how to live. I just don't know how to live properly. I don't know how to function in this job. And if you're out there and uh, I think if you love me, I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to be uh, included. I'd like to be, I don't know if I understood his family stuff, but I mean, I, I don't know if I really understood him as a father, but I really wanted him. As the Christians say, I think I accepted him. I, mean, I think it's a joke of me accepting him. I think I was asking him to accept me. I think that was what it really was. That's amazing what happened. I don't know. You can't explain it. Just the world looked different. Uh, I knew I was a new creature. <laughs> anyway, my life went straight up. I mean, it was weird. Then I got a job at Goldman Sachs. I made so much money that I, I, I achieved my dream. I, I, I achieved what I was just hoping to. and. Uh, but I, I knew that this was not what life was to be about. I mean, I had everything. And, and that's what I had to learn. We have to fill this void, this God-shaped void. You can't just be happy with materialism. It doesn't satisfy you. You know, there's just countless stories about guys who have given up their lives to follow Jesus. And uh, that is the secret of life. When you put your life down, when you say you're second, when you uh, let go and take his life, that is when you find it. I've always thought I always knew better. That's my life story. But, but it's just great to, to really to think that your friend actually knows better than you. It's better to even go as counterintuitive sometimes. It's better to, to follow. I think the word follow is what I do. My name is Lee Yi, and I am second.